Bee Monster Laboratory here. Today we're going to review the DIY Robot Smart Car Chassis Kit with speed encoder, two wheels, and a battery box. I purchased this on Amazon for $17.59 currently as of December 2021 and it is compatible with your Arduino and your Raspberry Pi which is the purpose of buying this. Uh, we'll make all builds on this temporary at least for now so that I can use reuse this chassis in the future for future videos. So let's take a look at what we get in the box. Let's put it together and then make a couple comments about what we think about the product. Let's get started. Right off the bat when you open the box you see these two large tires. They have rubber around the tire and then the plastic in the middle is pretty solid. These are large tires about two and a half inches in diameter which makes that pretty nice. So we got our two tires and then here, this black thing here in this plastic uh, sleeve, it's a phone holder for some reason they give you that. Now here's a bag of components that we will take a look at. Here's DC motor number one with an enclosed gearbox. This feels like a really sturdy swivel wheel. Here's motor number two and some wire that you will need to solder to the motors. And a bag of nuts and bolts and encoders and supports for the motors and a battery pack that holds four AA batteries. And they include some instructions, which honestly aren't that great, but that's just my opinion. And then the chassis body, which I really do like. It's sturdy, it's got a clean look to it, it's got a lot of different holes where you can fasten components. And don't forget to peel the paper off unless you want a brown chassis that you can't see through with a bunch of writing all over one side of it. To remove the motor, you just take the rubber piece off here, pull it out, there's a look at the gear uh, that's attached to the motor and the gearbox. Don't forget to remove your motor before soldering wires to it otherwise you're going to melt that rubber piece that holds the gear into the gearbox. We have successfully removed all the paper from our acrylic. It's nice, clear, and clean. And another reason I like this is because you can hot glue just about anything to it and removal is nice and clean and easy as well. Now you may hear the fan in the background but it is time to solder those wires onto the motor I'm just tinning the wires right now so that it's easier to attach to the contacts on the motor. I'm using a 0.8 millimeter 6337 tin lead rosin core solder. Some people don't like to use the lead, but it is easier to work with than the lead free solder. Now if you're having a hard time getting your solder to evenly disperse over the contact, you can use what I have as a liquid rosin or you can use a rosin paste. Both are perfect for this. Uh, slip your motor back into the gearbox here and then reattach your rubber tie down here to keep it connected to the gearbox. Now I use red 24 gauge wire for positive and black 24 gauge wire for negative. The positive and negative connection on one motor should be the exact opposite of the connection on the other motor if you want the thing to go forward. These black things here are rotating encoder disc for your uh, your motor. I don't have any plans on using it, but I'll go ahead and include that in the build. Now it's time to install your supports that hold your motor under the chassis here. And as you can see, it's supposed to fit snugly just like that. I believe that these are supposed to be identical, but this one does not fit in the same hole as the other one. So that's not going to work. We'll just have to use this as the outside support for the motor. Now it's time to mount the motor to the bottom of the chassis. Using the two supports on the side, you're going to drive the long screw all the way through and then put the nut on the other side and then tighten it up with a screwdriver. Then we'll do the same thing with the second screw. Put that through. There's a total of two screws to go through and you tighten that up as well. Then we'll do exact same thing with motor number two here. We'll mount that. And I'll use a pair of pliers to hold the nut because I can't fit my fingers down there. And uh, we'll just tighten it up that way. I have to get it pretty tight because there's a lot of slop, is what they call it. Um, a lot of movement between the motors once I mount them. I've tightened it pretty tight and I don't want to go any tighter than that. So I guess it's just something we'll have to live with. I'm not sure why there's so much movement, but I think it'll be all right for what we want to do. And then finally, well, sorry it's a little bit dark here, but you want to mount your swivel wheel. Don't forget that. 
Now for the switch, I'm just going to take 24 gauge wire and wrap it around the contacts at the bottom of the switch there, just like you see. You see some people put it in just like that, upside down with the contacts sticking up, but I'm going to put it in so that I just have to reach down and press the button instead of flipping it upside down. I'll just put it in this way. I do use a cheap a mini glue gun, hot glue gun, and I will apply some glue just on the side just a little bit just to keep it in place so it doesn't pop out. This will keep the button in place and if I ever need to move it I can just easily pull the glue off no problem. I'll be using a mini breadboard which I can stick I can peel and stick it to the acrylic but I don't want to do that so I'm just going to add a small spot of hot glue on either side of it to keep it in place. You want to make sure you have enough room for whatever development board you're using. I'm using an Uno and it's perfect. Since there are no holes directly beneath my Uno, I'm just using brass standoffs to kind of hold it in place as the robot car is in motion. The screws they provide don't work very well with this battery pack. It sticks up above the surface and scrapes and presses against the batteries. So here I'm using my own countersunk screws with a nut attached to the bottom of it. Now it's time to attach the tires and you just press them on. Pretty simple. Now to make the connections I use three columns on my mini breadboard and the first column there on the left I have a white wire from the switch at the bottom. Right above that I have a negative wire from the battery pack. And the second column I have the second white cable from the switch and above that I have the two negative wires from each motor. In the third column, I have the positive wire from the battery pack, and above that I have both of the positive wires from each motor. If you want to do it this way, you may want to shift all the wires over closer to one side so that they're not in the way of the switch. Overall, I'm pretty happy with this product. It is durable. I love the tires. and I like the clear, clean look of the acrylic and the fact that I can put hot glue on it to hold stuff in place, and it easily comes off. I also like the motors and the fact that they come with a, uh, an attachment to keep the motor in the gearbox. The gearbox is a big plus too, you don't have to use your own gears. And the swivel wheel in the front is very durable, but after a lot of use you might see some of those screws pop out, so they'll need retightened or replaced. The two things I absolutely dislike about this product is that the, none of the holes match up with any of the development boards that I have. Therefore, uh, I put those standoffs in to, to hold my Uno in place. And secondly, the motors are kind of sloppy underneath. There should be a little firmness to them. I've tightened them pretty tight, and I don't want to go any tighter. I don't want to crack the acrylic. But uh, those are the only two things. So far, it's holding up all right. So we'll see. Time will tell. Thank you all very much for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Be sure to check out our next video where we'll use this chassis for our complete robot car build.